We have the full snow moon at 5 degrees of Virgo, happening on February 24th at 4.30 a.m. Pacific, which is 7.30 a.m. Eastern. Check your local time to see when this lunar event is occurring for you. So yeah, February's full moon is known as the snow moon. And the name is quite literal if you live in one of the cold weather cities, mainly in the Northern Hemisphere. If you live in one of those cold weather cities or states, February happens to be a time of blizzards and flurries and other types of storms and nor'easters. And for this reason, this moon got its name through the observation of native and ancient tribes who are living under these cold conditions during this time of year. On a spiritual level, this may be a time where you're reaching a midpoint concerning difficult tasks that still require a bit of patience on your part. However, this is a period where you know that you'll be emerging from this chilly phase in your life. Because even though you're at the middle part, spring is coming and there's light at the end of the tunnel coming soon. Energetically, this moon is mixed bag in terms of the transits that we're dealing with. As a matter of fact, there are definitely a lot of hard transits that are going on. So this one definitely has some kick to it. But even with that, the vibes on the graph are moderate compared. Solitude is present on the 24th and is the highest energy on the graph so of course we may want some space to ourselves but it just so happens to be intersecting mental energy and social vibes so even though we may need some personal space for the moment the need to be around people and to get out of our heads is going to be strong and since i look at the energies around the next 48 hours of a lunar event by the time we get to the 25th there's some ambitious vibes that's crossing over this social energy and also the mental tones so this will help us in terms of having the motivation needed to put our thoughts into action. And because this is in Virgo energy, we'll feel more focused and intentional about the steps that we're taking in order to create something sustainable for ourselves. But yeah, here we are at this culmination point. We are at the peak of the lunar cycle. Full moons are a stage where we evaluate the steps we took during the new moon in the exact same zodiac placement. We look at the positive qualities that we adopted from the sign and the intentions that we set during the time of that new moon. And this would have been the new moon in Virgo on September 14th of 2023. That way, when we get to this full moon point, we can look at the lessons that we've learned, tweak what needs to be fixed, take action on the things that have become solidified and let go of the things that no longer serve us in this energy. So think back to what you were doing regarding Virgo and energy. How have you tried to enhance your life six months ago? Have you learned to be more intentional with your time, the efforts that you make, and overall your energy in general? How have you become more mindful and conscious of the behaviors that you do or how it affects other people? Or if any of these behaviors have been effective for you in any way? Sometimes this could look like becoming more regimented. That way you have more system and order going on in your life. And because this is Virgo energy, we use precision to cut through the unnecessary bullshit in our lives. So this could have been a time to cut out anything that's creating self-sabotage. This could have been a time to create better habits better coping skills. It could have been a time to create a more organized schedule. It could have been a time to get consistent when it comes down to your health, your fitness, your diet. It could have been a time to work on the mind-body connection or anything that helps you become more healthy on all levels. If it's not health, this could have been a time where you decided that you wanted to be more put together. Virgo energy is about being pristine and sometimes this could look like polishing things up in our lives, whether that's polishing up our appearance or having a more refined style of communication or even directing this energy to have a more polished home. This could have been a time where you want us to be more put together in that area of life as well. Sometimes enhancing our lives in Virgo energy and becoming more intentional looks like becoming more focused. And by that, maybe this is a period where you're looking to become more detailed oriented. That way you don't miss the small things. That way you don't miss the things that need your attention. And that can be all areas of life where you need to get more analytical, where you need to see things for what they are, especially the areas of life that need more fine tuning. Sometimes this focus and detailed oriented energy could be something like becoming more discerning. In Virgo, we learn the art of healthy skepticism, where we become less malleable to things that may be 
harmful to us. Sometimes this could look like making the wrong choices for what's right for your body. Sometimes it's doing research and learning the facts of something rather than going off of other people's opinions or beliefs. Sometimes this looks like weeding out some of the bad things in life. And other times this could look like setting healthy parameters with other people. So with energy like this, we become less gullible and less agreeable about things on a healthy level. Sometimes this being less malleable can translate into having more self-control. So was this a period where you were learning the fine art of discipline when it comes down to all areas of life? Whether that's the things that we consume, that could be our diet, that could be the stuff that we're viewing, that could be the stuff that we're reading. Sometimes that can translate into the importance of not acting on emotional impulse. This could have been a period where you were looking to take more accountability and stay the course when it comes down to your goals. That's another way we become disciplined in this energy. Sometimes this could lead to things like narrowing down your options so that way you reach attainable goals rather than something that's unrealistic. And with this level of discipline, Virgo energy teaches us to focus our mind on one or a few things. And because we're placing our focus and energy on that particular thing, we become experted within this energy. So was this a time where you were directing your energy to become more experted in a specific niche? That way you become more specialized and can become an expert in your chosen field. So this could have been a period where you were deciding to become more specialized in a certain area that will one day allow you to become the go-to to person within your profession. Sometimes this could look like taking courses in order to become that or joining apprenticeship programs or getting a mentor of source to help you get to this point. Because Virgo is about finding credible sources that can help us get to the next level. So hopefully all of you were able to use this to become more precise about how to enhance the things in your life. Let's look at these transits and see what we can expect from this lunar event. As a reminder, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps this channel grow. And if you'd like to support the work of this channel, you could do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. There's a link in the description box below. One of the things about this lunar event is it does have some bite to it. We have some harmonious alignments. However, there are definitely some edgy ones that are occurring during this time. Also, we have three chart rulers, Mercury for Virgo, and we have Jupiter and Neptune for Pisces. During full moons, we are looking at an opposition between the moon and the sun. So the moon always happens to be in the polarity point of that solar season. And by solar season, we're in Pisces season right now. And Virgo happens to be the opposite of Pisces. And Pisces has two rulers, Jupiter and Neptune. Jupiter being the ancient ruler of Pisces and Neptune being its modern ruler. Taking a look at Mercury first. Mercury is going to be connected to the moon, nodes, and Pluto in a hard alignment. And for this reason, we'll be looking at what we need to let go, what no longer serves us, and what's preventing us from transforming specific circumstances in our lives that we need to let go of, especially anything that's keeping us stagnant or anything that's blocking us emotionally. However, Mercury is going to make a connection to the sun and Saturn that's harmonious. Energy like this can get us motivated again. It can get us focusing on our goals. It can get us finding ways to uplift our confidence and taking constructive action to ensure that we have what we want and are able to shake off the things that bog us down. Jupiter, the ancient ruler for Pisces, is going to be in a hard aspect with Venus and Mars. So Venus and Mars are connecting to Jupiter in a way that may be problematic. And it's not in a way that's super edgy, although with the Mars situation it can be. But we need to be aware of actually with energy like this with both Venus and Mars. Sometimes this could look like overdoing it concerning partying or indulging in food, going on crazy shopping sprees, being very impulsive, being overly insatiable in an unhealthy way when it comes down to romance and bedroom antics. And with the Mars stuff, being a little bit argumentative. On top of that, Neptune is connected to Venus and Mars and Jupiter in this way. And so this can further ramp up the need for escapism. I will say the saving grace for this though is Jupiter is connected to the moon and Saturn in a harmonious way. So even though we have this partier energy and this out of control energy, mind you, I would rather have party vibes than really, really harsh vibes because at least we're having a good time. And I always say this when I see those types of connections like Jupiter and Mars and Venus and Mars or Sun, Jupiter, Sun, Mars, because at least it takes us out of our heads and gets us wanting to socialize and have a good time. However, we just need to be aware of overdoing it in these energies. But with Saturn and the moon here in a harmonious alignment, this could help us stabilize and get more grounded when need be. 
So it may help us get more emotionally regulated with the moon, but also take some constructive action with Saturn. The signs that will feel this lunar event more than others will be the mutable modality. Therefore, anyone with Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, or Pisces placements in their chart are going to feel this more than others. So if you have any chart points or placements, any planets in these signs, especially within these degrees, you're going to feel this lunar event more than others. Anyway, I hope you all have the best Virgo moon ever later and see you in the next episode.